So hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to our June meetup. Uh, uh, my name is Monica Phillip. I'm one of the co-organizers of the Women Technology of the Heartland meetup and also the AI Omaha group. Um, if you're a co-organizer of either of the groups, maybe give us a wave or, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up just so you guys get a chance to see who these who the people are that are part of the co-organizers. Um, so the Women Technology of the Heartland group. Sure, I have that one. Okay, so the, the mission of our Women Technology of the Heartland group is to empower and support women in the tech industry within our Heartland region. We strive to create inclusive community that fosters professional growth, leadership development, and networking opportunities for women in the field. Our group um, aims to break down barriers and promote gender equity and create supportive ecosystem that empowers women to succeed and thrive in the tech industry. So let's see. And then we'll have, um, we'll do an introduction to the AI Omaha group in a little bit, but based, uh, just to give you a quick uh, quick uh, recap of, of the group. It's a group uh, where, it's a community where we explore the latest trends in development in artificial intelligence. As AI technology continues to rapidly advance, this group provides a space where professionals, enthusiasts, and anyone interested in AI can come together to learn, share insights, and discuss the latest developments. So uh, we'll share more about the group. Staff will be able to do that after this. We have some great tech uh, tech community events. We'll share more towards the end because I want to make sure that we have we all the speakers get a chance to sh um, share what you know share. So. A lot of great things happen in the community. We'll share those events and towards the end, but we'll also share this in the newsletter. So if you have events uh, that are coming out that are in the community, please share them in the chat, but then also you can message us and we can add them to our newsletter that we send out on a monthly basis. So great community events from uh, Prairie STEM, from uh, Nebraska Tech Collaborative, from AIM. And we have our raffle sponsor today. So again, uh, Kathy will drop the link in the chat. If you want to sign up for the raffle, make sure to do that. So you, in the end, we'll do a, a wheel where we can do the raffle. For two tickets to HDC. Thank you, Colleen. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So let's get this party started. As I mentioned, we have a great uh, event for you guys tonight. So with an AI Omaha, I have collaborated to bring you guys this round robin with speaker virtual event. Each speaker will have about 10 minutes to briefly share their background and their topic. After the speaker shares, we'll have about two to three minutes per speaker for, for Q&A. Uh, we'll kick things off with Seth uh, Lecter, a senior incubation engineer at Transcendus. He will kick us off uh, with the AI basics highlighting the different AI tools and their responsible use. He also do a quick introduction of the AI Omaha group and then also give a background about him and his uh, tech, tech journey. Uh, next we'll have Marina Brown, founder and CEO of Moniva. She will share uh, ways to leverage AI to expand your business and improve processes. And last but not least, we have, we'll have Pam Haggy, owner and founder of Marigold 111, will demonstrate how to write effective prompts for optimal results using the chat GPT. It's a triple play of fascinating information about this emerging leading edge technology. So let's go ahead and kick us off, Seth. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Let's go ahead and unmute and welcome all the speakers, you guys. If you can go ahead and unmute, say welcome in the chat, say hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So first of all, um, I just wanted to cover a little bit about the AI Omaha meetup. Uh, first, we would like to say thank you to Women in Technology of the Heartland for hosting and helping us spread the word about our new meetup. We're developing an, we are developing and evolving an AI-driven community group that focuses on keeping up with the growing trends across uh, within AI across, for, and with the Silicon Prairie. Even though Omaha is in the name, um, we, we really want to be inclusive with, with all of, of, of Omaha and, and Nebraska, uh, Iowa, any, any place across the Silicon Prairie. We're not, uh, we certainly are not being exclusive in that regard. 
Our goal is to provide a trusted forum for business leaders, users, and developers to connect, exchange ideas, and navigate the evolving landscape of AI. By facilitating engaging discussions, promoting ethical practices, and staying at the forefront of emerging trends, we aim to propel the Silicon Prairie forward together. If you're interested in joining the conversation, please join our Discord group. Um, we have the uh, QR code there. Um, and of, also, of course, our meetup group. And let us know what you are working on or thinking about. If you're interested in speaking at a future event or would like to help grow the group, uh, please reach out to Pam. Um, her uh, email address is at the bottom of the slide. Finally, we're really excited about July's meeting. There will be more details coming soon on our meetup page, but we would encourage you to block off your calendars for July 25th between 5.30 and 7.30 to make sure that you can uh, make that event. Okay, so um, I get to lead off the artificial intelligence um, panel discussion. Um, I, uh, I'm excited to, to share uh, what I've uh, been learning um, and, and certainly um, honored to, to share this panel with, uh, with our other speakers today. Um, I'm a senior incubation engineer at Tricentis which means um, I get to build prototypes and research technology for our Office of Strategy. I've worked in software for almost 30 years, um, and I've been uh, hearing and reading about the pending arrival of artificial intelligence for even longer. Um, so, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about kind of uh, AI at a high level, um, tools at a very high level, and then get into kind of my favorite area and an area that people I think need to spend the most time on, which is responsible use. Welcome to the future, maybe. Um, it is kind of indisputable that we are at the conjunction of years of growing computing power, iterative research on artificial intelligence, and the accumulation of very, very large data sets. The combination of those three things are what make uh, the new generation of generative AI possible and accessible to so many people. Um, the technology, to cover a few of the basic terms, generative AI, uh, which is what we're all seeing with things like large language models and chat GPT, and diffusion models that you might use to, um, you know, generate graphics for your slide deck, uh, like I did, um, are all based on neural networks. And a neural network, right, is basically a computing system that was inspired by biological neural networks, um, like are found in uh, most living organisms on the planet. And these uh, biological, these Computing neural networks are the basis for pretty much all of the recent breakthroughs in, in AI technology. Um, generative AI, which is built on top of the neural networks, is a system capable of generating output in either form of text or images, for instance, in response to prompts. Um, large language models, again, such as ChatGPT, which everyone is probably familiar with it by this time. And if not, well, we've got a couple of, of, of uh, speakers who are going to touch on just that subject. Um, large language models are a form of generative AI built using unsupervised learning, which is a trend that changed in the last decade uh, for a, most of the early research on um, AI was guided learning where they would try to instruct the AI on a very specific set of input and a very specific set of output. And some of that was because of the limitations of the computing resources and the limitations on the size of the data sets. As the computing resources got to be significantly more impressive, right? Um, largely through uh, graphics card technology, right? Which, which is really good at matrix math. Um, these graphics cards um, not only are, are amazing at doing uh, 3D graphics, 
turns out the same math is also uh, very good at artificial intelligence and in, in these neural networks. And then, um, and then with these incredibly large data sets they had access to, they shifted to unsupervised, unsupervised learning where they feed massive amounts of, of data to the neural networks. And then um, without any kind of formal definition, right? They just kind of let the system uh, internalize the structure of the data, millions to billions of parameters in some of these data sets. And then afterwards, they'll do a little bit of tuning. And it's turned out that that is incredibly powerful, way more powerful than anyone thought it was going to be. A lot of the uh, early researchers um, who, who are still around have been surprised at just how powerful that has turned out to be. Um, diffusion models, which are used to generate uh, the graphics, uh, use a very similar um, type of, of, of training. The, the difference is is how they actually generate the data um, or generate the output. So in a large language model, right, it's 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 trying to figure out what exactly to provide uh, as as a reasonable output based on its understanding of, of language. With a diffusion model, it's it's actually almost acting like a sculptor, where it's taking um, kind of random uh, uh, data random picture data and then and then kind of finding the the image you've described uh to to display for you what you want for instance if you say i want an astronaut on a horse on the moon um it tries to find that in the in the image it started with and then finally we have some really interesting emergent behavior that has shown up that's really kind of blowing people's minds um all over the place and that includes things like the ability to pass the bar exam which none of these systems were built to pass the bar exam, but because of the amount of data they have available uh, through through essentially scraping the entire internet, um, it turns out these things uh, can do interesting things like pass the bar exam or 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 ACE and ACT uh, college test or stuff like that. Now, what does this lead to? Well, it's led to a massive amount of 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 applications of this technology just in the last few months. Um, Google, Microsoft uh, are, are doing stuff with search. Uh, of course, you would expect them to do so. Uh, but but a lot of other companies are, are getting in to the game as well. There's a, a, a AI company called Hugging Face, which provides some interesting workspace and some open source software. And they've just announced uh, a, a search wrapper around Google search um, that applies their own AI technology. Um, Microsoft has announced what they're calling co-pilots or personal assistants for almost anything that they provide as a service. So anything from, from software development all the way to uh, uh, Word document support and various other things, you're going to start to see these co-pilots available, um, which, is, which is similar to like a specialized version of, of ChatGPT. Um, healthcare, uh, IBM, a whole bunch of startups uh, are are looking at uh, applying these artificial intelligence systems to um, to helping diagnose and treat uh, uh, medical issues. Um, a lot of the big banks and fintech startups are figuring out how to apply this technology to the stock market and banking and various other things. So uh, that's going to be very interesting going forward. Uh, image generation manipulation. NVIDIA, of course, for video games, Adobe is doing some really interesting stuff um, with, with making it easier to edit uh, photographs. Some of their recent demos have been quite impressive. If, if I would urge you to go out and look at those. Of course, Stable Diffusion, which I use to generate these slides. And, and Mid Journey, uh, which is also very powerful as well. And then you can solve your own problems. Um, thanks to Meta uh, uh, accidentally kind of releasing their Llama model into the wild, we have, um, we have some large language models, which you can actually play with um, as open source software, um, which, which this, this is all very impressive for, for how quickly we got here. Um, and it does feel like we are pretty far along and moving quickly. But the thing to remember is most of these applications are barely first generation.
Uh, so it feels like there's a lot going on. It feels intimidating. It feels kind of overwhelming at times, but um, but there's plenty of opportunities to to leverage this and, and do some pretty good stuff with it. So I should get that out of there. I'm sorry. Um, Now, my favorite thing is response that I've been talking about lately is responsible use, right? So it's really important to understand um, kind of what we're doing here. Um, as I put on the slide, hype, hype kills um, careers. I don't know if uh, the most recent example of this that I've, I've really come to enjoy as an as a as, as a dire warning is the uh it was in, highlighted in the new york times the avianca airlines lawsuit so one of the lawyers involved in the avianca airlines lawsuit um decided to use chat gpt for legal research and because chat gpt is not actually um, a paralegal and doesn't actually uh, necessarily access the latest version of LexisNexis it cited six non-existent cases and the lawyer didn't understand how chat gpt works and submitted those six non-existent cases as part of their case law uh for the lawsuit and needless to say the judge is not particularly happy the bar association is not particularly happy and the lawyer is having to deal with the fallout from using a tool they didn't completely understand for a use case it was not designed to deal with um, another one that that i've cited before a group of samsung developers excited to get their hands on chat gpt this was back in like february um, grabbed a whole bunch of, of source code and, and project documentation and threw it into um chat gpt and asked chat gpt to do analysis problem there of course is chat gpt ingests anything that is fed to it so that samsung intellectual property is now part of chat gpt um, it's probably not a really good thing to do um, to to share your intellectual property with uh, other companies um, by feeding it into their artificial intelligence systems so those are two situations where some people got really excited about about the technologies and then you know maybe didn't um didn't act responsibly because they didn't know uh, what exactly the the tools were doing for them so they, it's important to know right it's important to have knowledge about these tools we need to when, before you use them you need to understand how they work and what they're going to produce for instance as i just highlighted asking chat gpt for case law uh, for a lawsuit, it's probably not particularly a good idea. But what it is good at, and what I've used it for at work and in, a, in a sanctioned way, was generating micro articles. We had a series of articles we wanted to generate for a community website, and it turns out that um, that that's a fantastic use. Um, it solves uh, what I have down here is the third point. It solves the blank page problem, right? If it's something I have pretty good knowledge about, if an article on say synthetic data generation, um, I don't necessarily wanna write a two page article on synthetic data generation, but I can get ChatGPT or one of the other large language models to help me get started um, gener writing that article. And then I can go in and I can edit it. And it, in, in, in our experience, it turned about a six hour article writing process. If you start with a blank page, into about an hour and a half long article writing process. So this is just one use case where understanding what the tool was gonna to be able to do for us really, really provided a net benefit. Another one was project ontologies. So when you're starting a new software project, uh, building an ontology that uh, essentially the entire team um, can leverage to to have good conversations about about what they're building um, is is something that is powerful and generally emerges as part of the project. How, using something like one of these large language models to jumpstart that is an idea that I came across um, on a blog and and I've tried it and it actually is 
um, is a pretty interesting and, and solid way to maybe, again, solve that blank page problem. So responsible use comes down to, right, again, understanding what these tools are doing. And unfortunately, at this point, that's uh, going to require some some either some personal investigation or, you know, finding somebody um, like Marina or, or Pam who um, who are going to tell us, uh, uh, help us understand uh, good uses as well in, in the rest of this talk and 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 using that to to make sure that you um, you don't make any serious mistakes. So um, that's kind of uh, what I wanted to cover. Does anyone have any questions? How did, how did your team react when you were using that in your, your you know, for your team to uh, generate ideas? Were they okay with it or? Yeah, actually it was uh, something, um, something my manager and I came up with because uh, we knew we had to write, it was about 30 of these articles we wanted to churn out. And uh, there's only about three people on the team and the workload seemed pretty ridiculous. And so, and so we, we had the idea of seeing how many we could generate in in two days using chat gpt to help us get started and uh and yeah we were really happy with with how much it helped so um oh with content writing how do you avoid plagiarism issues that's a very good point so it comes down to to reviewing it comes down to um again taking responsibility for the output it's um i have an example i didn't i didn't put it in my slides um we have one that is like almost purely chat gpt generated and we have one that was almost completely human generated and honestly they're not hard to tell apart chat gpt is not a great writer um anyone who anyone who chooses to use it um and not edit um i mean your mileage may vary and maybe if you're better at prompt engineering um than we were uh but but it's pretty obvious you know we we went in and made sure to edit the heck out of these um, outputs. So I don't know how much they resembled the original output by the time we were done, but it was they were significant changes that we made. Thanks. Um, thanks. Uh, interested to uh, hand it over to Marina now and see what see what we've got going here Seth do you know that when I was listening to you talk about how many articles that you guys had to generate I was thinking about for those of you that have seen Hamilton uh the musical and uh he, you know they made a big deal of how many articles he wrote um I'm wondering what would it have looked like if he actually had chat GPT at his disposal <laughs> so all right. Well, uh, nice to uh, see and meet everybody. Um, my name is Marina Brown. Um, I got interested in uh, artificial intelligence back in the early 2000s when um, I actually enrolled at uh, the University of Southern California for their artificial uh, intelligence program. And I will tell you that back then, as I believe it is still today, actually creating AI is somewhat of a boring uh, ordeal, um, despite all of its hype. When I first started working uh, with AI, we were literally trying to determine what is the quickest way for uh, an object to get from point A to point B, which, um, you know, back then seemed like a very um, labor intense process. And, you know, People were wondering why in the world would anyone want to do that? But then fast forward 20 years, and now um, a lot of applications that we all use on a daily basis, like Google Maps and um, our Uber drivers and so on, um, use in order for them to, to get from you know, their locations to our houses and to our next destination. So um have been very interested in AI 
uh, for for a long time. I've worked, uh, I've had the opportunity to employ those skills in banking and in transportation and electronic payments. Um, as of recently, I have decided to start my my own company, and I'm looking forward once I get to that stage that um, artificial intelligence will also be part of uh, the application that we write uh, at, at my company. But uh, enough about me. Let's talk about Chat GPT at work. Um, I put those images down because uh, I'm in in a way almost opened the door for what Pam is going to talk in a little bit, but. Um, those are um, AI generated, and some of my prompts were around uh, uses, usage of Chat GPT at work. Um, and you guys can see what is it that it determines uh, uh, Chat GPT at work would look like. So, all right. Um, so we all um, we ever since uh, I think early February is when the big announcement about Chat GPT came to be. Um, not just individuals, but businesses, whether they are AI, AI related or not, have been wondering what to do with it, right? And uh, bottom line is the conversation that we're going to have today is not going to be about the futuristic uh, AI technology, but we're really going to focus on the some very simple use cases that I believe are uh, things that businesses can employ today as part of uh, their everyday workflows and, and processes. So there's a lot of hype out there. Um, and, you know, we're all wondering, are we using it enough? Are we not using it enough? How else we can use it? You know, we hear that it should really be used in everything um, that we touch. That's not necessarily the case. Um, so let's just, uh, talk through a few of those. And, and be, actually, before I get there, um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, the speed of, of AI. I don't know if you've seen this side, there's an AI for that. Um, but it's a great way to keep up with all of the AI applications that are coming out. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of them. Um, it, this site gets updated on a daily basis and every day there's something new and exciting that you can play with. Most of them are for free. Um, so I would definitely encourage you if you just want to uh, spend some time, not only that you get to learn about the um, problems that it, you know many companies out there are trying to solve, uh, but you also get to create some new ideas of your own probably. And, um, you know, AI has been part of our lives for many, many, many years now. Um, it's definitely started, you know, many of us know it as, as data science back in the day um, until it accelerated into a lot more complex uh, frameworks and, um, and and models. But lately, um, it's grown like astronomically uh, fast. And so as, I, as Seth mentioned earlier, right, many of these applications, it's gen one. Um, we're going to be experiencing impacts of this um, in the coming future. But the nice thing is um, the creativity of these applications are in, in a way positioning us to not only focus on what is important on how we use ChatGPT today, but also generate ideas of how it can be used um, in the future. And just as an example, um, as part of the uh, app that I showed you earlier um, is the Rebecca AI and you put in your ideas and it will actually evaluate your idea and it will tell you if it's uh, good or bad, how much you believe it, that's up to you, whether or not you want to release your ideas out in the open uh, to these applications, not knowing what they're going to do with it, it's up to you. Um, I would always uh, highly recommend, obviously, never to release uh, business proprietary ideas in, in, in the open. But uh, just for fun, if you ever want to go out there and look for creative uh, ideas and whether they have any merit, um, there, there's an app for that. Okay, so how can businesses use chat GPT? Um, how, I, I will assume that at this point in time, most of you have um, experimented with this, but um, there's 
two ways typically in which uh, that technology enters our lives. One is through the typical um, open AI uh, portal where you can open chat GPT and start prompting it and asking, looking for information, getting responses. And it's a, you know, two way, uh, two way conversation. The other way, which um, I believe is going to be a lot more prominent in business is going to be through uh, the usage of a, uh, of the open AI chat GPT um, um, uh, APIs. And those APIs uh, pretty much bring the same technology as what ChatGPT is introducing on the front, but they're introducing it um, through uh, um, other applications who then layer their own functionality on top of ChatGPT to create uh, different experiences. For example, what an embedded AI would look like um, is uh, just a company in for most of these companies, I, I don't work with them. I don't really know them, but they've been in the news in one shape or another. So I wanted to uh, kind of briefly touch on, on some of these examples. Freshworks is an example of a company that really takes uh, a lot of the functionality of uh, chat GPT and then embeds that in their own applications to ultimately uh, create use cases for enhanced and personalized customer support, better sales engagement that really adopts the message to whoever it is that it's targeting. Um, it helps demystify uh, marketing and marketing messaging and ultimately helps software development um, in increasing application um, application creation. We're going to talk about some of these subjects in just a little bit. But before I go there, I want you to take a look at um, this. So uh, Freshworks, Fred, Freddy AI is what they've called their uh, um, model. It includes 30,000 machine learning models. Um, and for those of you that might not necessarily be familiar with um, AI, uh, models. You know, back in the day when I used to work for a local bank, we had one or two, and it took us, you know, years to develop those. For an application to depend on thirty thousand machine learning models, that will tell you the incredible speed um, of of new AI technology and its development. All right, let's talk about some use cases. Um, one of my favorites, because I um, I used to work for a multinational company on, on numerous occasions, actually. And, um, you know, one of the things that always was uh, a big barrier um, to doing business together was communication. Right? Back, back before uh, Google introduced their translators and um you know you just had to go through a normal translator to translate an email that someone on the other end wrote that didn't know english um and so i find it fascinating that today you can put in uh you know your communication and in a matter of like less than 20 seconds you now have full translation of that email um and as we talked about before right you should always uh trust or should challenge uh, what chat GPT uh, spits it back at you. Um, you know, always try to uh, put a, a spin on or verify that what's translated um, makes sense by using a different translator, for example. But in my opinion, what that's going to do is ultimately increase the uh, trust in business relationships because you may not necessarily uh, need intermediaries uh, any longer or to the extent in order to produce uh, communication. All right. Um, speed of app development. That one is, uh, I think, in the news all the time. But um, having a, a co-pilot as a pair programmer is uh, becoming more and more prevalent. And what that really does is increases um, increases how fast developers can actually build the applications that we need and want. Um, you, you know, being in technology, you guys know that the need for technology uh, personnel is ever uh, so high. And, um, you know, I still like to quote that in the United States, we only produce 5% uh, of the developers that we uh, need in the country. So 
having someone or something that can ultimately help these uh, small percentage of developers improve their speed of code development by five, six, seven, ten x um, is ultimately going to make a huge impact to um, companies and I think the U.S. economy overall. Um, training is another example in which companies can uh, implement chat GPT and what that um, looks like is not just for internal uh, employees but also for accelerating the onboarding of, of new hires right um, oftentimes it takes three to six months for a new employee to ultimately onboard not only uh, knowledge wise but cultural Culturally wise, uh, technology like ChatGPT can actually uh, in, increase the speed of that onboarding um, and also increase employee acumen, right? Um, I always love that when I started my, my business and even to this day, um, I have, you know, Chad GPT is almost a co-founder of mine. In fact, I asked uh, jokingly to someone the other day and uh, how, you know, how do you allocate equity to Chad GPT? And, and they burst, burst it out laughing, but it's, it's true. Um, it's having someone like Chad GPT with the right prompts that Pam will discuss in a little bit can really bring a, uh, almost like a whole department of professors at your disposal. And um, having that at the disposal of, of the employees, I think will increase the acumen, the knowledge, uh, and um, you know, ultimately the intelligence of, of many of our employees. Um, marketing. Uh, so I don't know if you guys can uh, see this curve, but ultimately um, each one of these dots represents a uh, opportunity for AI and chat GPT to engage uh, with our potential customers from the initial reach when we personalize the message that says, hello, I am so-and-so and I would like to be able to little, learn a little bit about you um, and your business um, all the way through uh, actually um, you know, acting on that relationship converting that customer and ultimately engaging them um, and post sales. Um, but the way that sales people and marketing personnel can use those messages is ultimately uh, not just in content creation, like we were talking about earlier, but truly uh, talk specifically to the type of person that's on the other end and is looking to receive uh, to receive your message. This is one of my favorites, actually, uh, bias in employee communication. Um, so I, um, you know, oftentimes uh, hear about how men and women speak different. So one time, um, you know, in, in, my, in my opportunities to engage potential customers of mine, um, I write these fairly large emails. And so uh, one time I, in a frustrated moment decided to run you know my current email through uh chat gpt and see what would it sound like for example if a guy wrote that email and as you can see there's a stark difference uh between the email that i wrote versus the email all right, so picking back up. Um, so anyways, how uh, my my specific example ultimately uh, speaks to how we can work in the workplace to kind of bring employees more towards, you know, the middle uh, communication point where um, we don't have to be biased based off or, you know, hey, I see that email and I know that a woman write, wrote it, or I see this email and I know that a man wrote it. But ultimately talking about, um, you know, looking and reviewing the information that we receive and react on based off of just the business that we do. Um, legal, and I know that I'm uh, almost running out of time here, but um, legal is another part of, uh, of our businesses where I think chat GPT can be tremendously helpful. Um, I doubt that there's anyone on this call who has not actually, uh, waited for extensive amounts of time. 
for legal to review and approve documentation or contracts or agreements, um, write customer letters and so on. Um, with the um, increased uh, engagement of chat GPT, um, we're obviously not removing legal out of the picture, but what we're doing is providing people with the right tools to expedite that, uh, that process. So uh, people can ultimately uh, acquire customers faster because it doesn't take uh, four weeks or so to uh, get a document uh, reviewed. And last but not least, um, you know, I've been in supply chain uh, for a while. Uh, one of our my favorites is um, that you know not necessarily uh, Chat GPT, although Chat GPT also could play in this. But my hope is that um, AI in general will have a hugely positive impact on climate. In this specific example, uh, by potentially aggregating information from many many different sources and providing it to the right parties, so that for example our truck. Uh, don't run empty on uh, on the roads. And I will now take questions. Do you have a preference for any AI tool like PyTorch or FastAI or a uh, combination of them? Um, uh, what do you use if you're wanting to build a model for something? What's your preference? I um, I don't know that I'm necessarily the best person to talk right now about the uh, building latest tools of building specific AI uh, models, to be frank, uh, because I haven't actually done that in a long time. But um, so, yeah, I would say do your research and probably talk with other data scientists on the on the subject. Don't on Microsoft and Google when you're oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, Marina, there's a there's a question in chat. I don't know if you saw it. Uh thoughts on Microsoft and Google integration into all of their products and services. I don't know if that's a question though. Oh, thoughts on Microsoft. Um I would say um the sooner the better. Frankly, um, I will tell you that um, I am, you know, a, I'm always an optimist and I'm a huge proponent of ultimately getting uh, more AI into into our world. And uh, please get any form of intelligence integrated into Excel uh, because I, you know, the world operates on it and chat GPT or not, the world will continue to operate on it. And if it could start helping with a lot of the financial discussions that I have to have on a daily basis, that would be amazing. So uh, yes, I, you know, BART and open AI and chat GPT. Um, I'm looking forward to even deeper integration and all of that. All right, Pam, I think it's uh, over to you. All right, I am so sorry. I'm trying, I kept my chat up because I wanted to share via that. So, um, I'm so sorry. So my slides are going to be just a bit because I'm going to have to pull it up in a different way. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment. Um, and Monica, could you maybe just while I get that going, could you have a little dialogue? Do you mind? Here it is. Let me just share it in a different way. Okay, let me know if you need any help, Pam. No, I had it downloaded and then I wanted to do it in a tab versus a download because I wanted to um, go over to a live chat. Okay. So. Like a, like a chat, like a, the chat GPT, like live chat or. Yeah. Okay. So 
Because uh, I was going to do both and toggle. So I'm sorry to the create team that's on here. Do you want? See, I should have put a script in there that said, hey, chat, how do you? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so hold on once. You just bear with me a moment here. Then um, let's see any predictions on AI between now and Christmas. Seth or Marina? By the way, I love like the co-founder. Like <laughs> that's, I mean, one of the things that you know that it could do and just kind of help you throughout your process. That's amazing. You know, I've had to, um, I've had to take, uh, learn a lot about financial modeling uh, recently. And one of the things that um, I've, I've been trained to say is that uh, as soon as I open it, the first thing is, "Hey, this is my best guess." But it's very likely wrong, right? So <laughs> I think our, you know, our uh, guess is that um, AI technology is uh, along the same lines. But I, I'm hoping that, um, you know, my biggest hope actually is that AI technology makes huge impact into healthcare. I know Seth talked a little bit about that earlier. Um, I we don't necessarily talk so much about it, right? A lot of this has been in development of applications and all of that um but it's true i i'm i'm looking forward to like learning more and obviously keeping my eyes open on um healthcare and, and ai yeah let's see all right there we go okay do you see it now can you guys see it yep mastering scripts yes i'm sorry about that you are good Okay, thank you all. I AI changes so much all the time. And Marina and Seth, thank you so much for what you shared. That was really helpful and really good. I have been using Chat GPT for a few months now. I was originally introduced to it by someone that's a college student that happens to work with us. And he um he had shared it before the 4.0 version was released. And it was interesting once I started utilizing it, it's, we became fast friends. I, I, I was really, um, I just keep the tab open and it's interesting how you can just have a quick conversation with it. So just a bit about me, my background is um, marketing and sales. I'm currently the co-owner co -owner and founder of Marigold 111. Um, my business partner and I um, help clients leverage IT and um, enhance their digital footprint. So we're we're actually teaching some clients about some different AI um, models that can help their business. That's a bit about me. As far as I just thought I'd cover quick the power of prompts, some key components, good prompts versus not so good, best practices, and then leave time for a QA. and a this this one well crafted scripts can really help with like educational assistance like there's so many ways you can use chat i was kind of not sure how far to go into this today but i just thought let's just i'm assuming that most people are exposed to this but i just don't know how deep you've gone into it so like educational assistance it literally could be like a personalized tutor it can help with homework or support. You know, we hope our students aren't copying and pasting, but it is good with being able to pull up some information. Can help with creative writing. Like there's, you know, if there's, you know, plot generation or character development. Um, we had fun playing with it for Marigold. We created a, we asked chat to create a script regarding creating scripts for YouTube. And um, YouTube, and it's funny, we we actually played out this whole script using exactly what it said. And we just had so much fun. There was so much laughter in that particular YouTube video because we we just we were just having a blast with it. Um, there's research and gathering. There's any kind of fact, you know, there's there's fact checking you'll want to do. But there are some things like um, my daughter, I said she just recently had a baby. I shared that with you all. Well, what I didn't share is um, they accidentally, you know, punctured her bladder when she was getting her C-section. And so chat was my first, you know, one of my, well, making sure she was okay was my first first thing. But once she, we found out she was fine after surgery, all the things, I went to chat. Um, just to do some, you know, just initial like what should, what will she, 
What are some, you know, things we should watch for in regard to her recovery, et cetera, et cetera. So I was just able to use it for some research, um, professional um, assistance. Um, you know, that's where like problem solving. I know I attended a webinar recently where the gentleman was going through how he's used Excel and used chat to help with some Excel formulas, which was pretty cool. Um, it can, um, you know, do some proofreading like Marina uh, just exactly what you had shared in regard to your letter. Um, entertainment, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it'll tell you a joke. If you want it to, you can just say, hey, you know, tell me a joke and it'll it'll do that. Um, and there's just a number of things, mental health support, like it can give you like, you know, some ideas in regard to wellness, health and wellness, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, and then you can see there's, there's just a, a number of other ones, ideation and um, coding. Um, learning new skills. So there's just so many ways you can use chat. So how do we how do we talk to it? Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure that somewhere in your script you assign it a role. Like, is it a customer? Is it a business analyst? Is it a business owner? Like, what role is it play? Is it playing? And then be specific in any kind of detail that will help lead to a better re response. And then provide some context regarding that content. Um, and then um, have a conversation with it. I can't emphasize that enough. It's literally called chat. So it's like, you know, have a chat with it. And, um, and then condense, revise, and edit. You know, as it gives you information, like as you're having that conversation, you can fine tune to get more finite results from the output. Here's some example. See, I don't know that this transferred over very well. This was the challenge I had earlier. So I'll just read these. I put this together in Canva. So I'm sorry, it's not transferring over very well. Um, so like, here's some example of some good prompts versus not so good. So what the first one is supposed to say that doesn't show you the whole thing is outline the potential pros and cons of renewable energy sources. That would be a good prompt. Another one that's not so good says talk about renewable energy. You know, that's just too basic to so give it enough context that it can spit out the right thing, you know, or something closer to what you're looking for. Another good prompt is describe how the process of photosynthesis works in plants suitable for a fifth grade student. So you're telling it, you know, I want it basic. I want it to hear for like a five, you know, fifth grader. And then a bad, not so good one would be what's photosynthesis. And then here's a couple more examples of good and not so good. Um, I wish these would have came through better. Sorry about that. Explain the main principles of quantum physics in simple terms in high, for a high school student. And then the not so good is explain quantum physics. You get the point. We're just give it as much information as you can. So then the best practices and tips. Start with a simple prompt. Clearly communicate. Break down complex questions. If you've got like a big, long question mark, then break that down. Specify format and constraints. Engage in the conversation. Iterate and refine. And then above all, maintain ethical usage. I did throw in one here from a, just a little tip thing. You can use square brackets. There's some different um, symbols that can be used. You can ask chat, what are they? But this one is just an example. Uh, the square brackets are often used to, to for placeholders that can be replaced with specific values. So that's kind of fun to make that a little easier. So here was one I gave it. I said, what are some of the funniest prompts you've been given? And this is what chat gave me back. Tell me a joke that will make me laugh out loud. Create a funny dialogue between a cat and a dog discussing their day. <laughs> Write a funny story about a penguin. Wants to learn to fly. I mean, just kind of silly ones, right? So then I thought, well, I want to know a, a joke that will laugh, make me laugh out loud. And so here is the joke. Tell me a joke that will make me laugh out loud. Sure. Here's a classic joke for you. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Ha ha. Ha ha. That is uh -huh. a good old well. <laughs> So there, there are so many people on this call that could just hit it out of the park in regard to chat GPT. The main thing, and I would have loved to have been able to just go live 
um, and just be able to actually have, you know, you experience some of that. I just through Zoom, I'm not sure how to make that happen. Um, I had one that was like, it, it just an example where I was trying to convince my husband of something and um, and uh, about kind of this little side hustle thing, side business thing with a property we own. And I had put in a prompt into chat and then I set the computer down in front of both of us and I was blown away. Like it totally did this whole business plan. It did market research. It did all the stuff, which was just a foundation of things, but it was just a little surprising how much content it gave me based on the prompt I had given it. So there you go. Keep the tab open when it comes to chat GPT. If you aren't already utilizing it, here's how you can access it. And then I did want to circle back to the uh, AI Omaha. If, if you're not already um, in the meetup group for AI Omaha, I encourage you to join. We do have an event coming up July 25th, and um, it's going to be on legal. If the, Coley Justin, two lawyers from Coley Justin will be presenting, um, and it should be it should be a really good one. And then um, I think all I have left is the question mark, and I see there's some things in chat. That I don't have open. But yeah, let me know if, if there's questions or if anyone else wants to chime in with a tip on good, you know, creating great prompts. You guys have questions or comments? In the chat, uh, or you can unmute if you want to ask a question. You, to any of the three speakers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use please and thank you when you're chatting with ChatGPT and do you <laughs> call it do you call it by a pronoun? We call it her in our house, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> it just happened that way. It's so funny. Like I have definitely done that, but then I'm like, wait, it's a machine. But I will find when I'm having communication back and forth with it, I will say great so that I kind of let it know, let the machine know that it's on the right track. Like if I liked that, but I wanted to fine tune something, sometimes I will say great and then do my fine tune message. That is funny you say that. <laughs> I, I, I always I, use my thesis and thank you, so, yeah. <laughs> including in chat GPT. <laughs> I, I started doing it after uh, one of our corporate, the, we have an AI group at my company and, and, and one of the, one of our internal experts said, actually, it, it does help because of how the language models are trained on the type of data they're trained on. Um, it changes the output being polite to it actually changes its responses, um, which I thought was fascinating. So I started doing it. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it's fascinating. That, that are being shared in the chat about, uh, let's see, so Lynn had a question. Does anyone have a favorite resource to help develop and refine prompt, like writing prompt for engineer skills? And um Kenneth shared a link on there. So that's a really great resource to, to use that. Um, so if you're on there, click on that. I recently read um, actually how you can train um, ChatGPT to actually get to know your writing and speaking style. Um, I don't know if I can find a link, but it, I think you, if you look online for something that's along the lines of train yeah, GPT to use my style, you'll probably find that there's like a seven or eight steps process that you have to uh, go through and actually uh, feed it a lot of your writing and email style and all that stuff. And then um, it actually starts writing uh, along the same lines like you. So, And I will drop in the chat. Um, so I'm part of another group on LinkedIn, like the AI group. And then so they actually come, came up with like, if you're having a hard time even figuring out what that question is, um, you can put in the prompt. It says, I want you to become my prompt creator. And then it just kind of goes into the thing. And then it just really just starts asking you questions like, what do you want this to be about? And then it goes down. And then, you know, so yeah, um, yeah if, if, if someone wants to uh, test that out but that's something that a lot of the the community came together and created i thought it was kind of really interesting because it really just asked you like the demographic the, the you know things you don't think about you're like just tell me about this and then it's just like well tell me about these other three questions so um 
Any other questions or anything that you guys, if, you know, um, anything that you want to share on the, on the chat, like any links or anything that, you know, that you guys have experienced that is really helpful. I think this would be, we'll, we'll try to combine all those different notes and share that after the meeting as well, just so you guys have our, as, to use as a reference. I just wanted to say that, that Trent, who's on this call, just uh, shared a article recently with Pam and I about uh, how prompt engineering is becoming a new career field. And uh, that I can't remember who the quote was from, but um, he said that English is the new programming language. And so that, that just kind of stuck with me that, you know, how, how easy is that? We already know how to speak this language. We just have to know how to refine it to get the results that we want. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Kathy, who is going to do our raffle. And if you guys have any questions, again, you can still drop them in the chat. I know we're at time, but I love our conversation. I love everything that's been shared so far. You have to hop off, you know, hop off. But uh, really quick, Kathy, are you with us? 